Bye, kids. Happy Monday. I told you yesterday on Palm Sunday that we would be looking every day at what Jesus was doing on each day during Holy Week. So today, if you want to get out your Bible, you can look up in your Bible where we are. We are going to be in the book of Mark today. Mark is in the New Testament. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Well, we start out in chapter 11, verse 12. And the Bible says, and on the morrow, now that means on the morrow, that means tomorrow. So it's been Palm Sunday already. Jesus rode into Jerusalem. The people praised him. Do you remember the word that they said when they were waving the palm branches and praising him? Hosanna. Yep. They were saying Hosanna. And so Jesus has come into Jerusalem. Now this is the next day. All right. So the next day he's still in Jerusalem. And the Bible says that he goes into the temple in Jerusalem. Now, the temple would have been like their church. Like we have our church today. They had a temple. So Jesus went to the temple. Now, the temple or our church is for worship, right? It's God's house. So Jesus goes into the temple, but he is very disappointed in what he finds. In fact, he's more than disappointed. He's angry. Did you know Jesus got angry? He did, but it was for a good reason. It was what we would call righteous anger. He was angry because what some of the people were doing in the temple. Let's find out what it was. Now in verse 15, we see that he went into the temple and he saw the people that were in there and what they were doing. Now in Bible days, before Jesus died for our sins, the people would make sacrifices to God. They would get an animal. It might be a lamb or a dove, or it might even be a cow. Uh, they would get an animal and they would kill it as a sacrifice to God. Now that might, it might sound kind of mean to kill an animal, but remember, sin is very bad. It's very serious. And so there had to be a blood sacrifice for sin. Now that doesn't mean that we need to hurt ourselves for our sin because Jesus took the punishment for all our sins. So the people would go to the temple and they would buy an animal and they would sacrifice it. And so in the temple, they had animals. You can see in our picture back here, you might be wondering why are there animals in the church? Well, that's what they were there for. They were there so the people could buy them and then sacrifice them to God. So Jesus goes into the temple. And when he goes into the temple, he sees the animals, of course. But what makes him angry is he sees what the people are doing. Remember, this is Passover celebration, so people from all over the world are coming into Jerusalem, and they want to come into the temple to make a sacrifice to God. So they have to buy an animal to sacrifice. Now, the people, the people in the temple knew this, so they had animals to buy, but they would charge shekels for them, usually a half shekel for a certain animal. And so they wouldn't accept any other kinds of money. You know, in other countries, they use different kinds of money. In Jerusalem, in the temple, they wanted shekels. And they wouldn't accept anything else. And they were charging too much for the animal. The animal, if they would buy it somewhere else besides in the temple, they could have gotten it for a lot cheaper. So the people in the temple were charging too much. They were stealing the money of the people because they were charging too much for the animal. And then, because if the person didn't have a shekel when they came in, they would have to go to the money changers table and they would have to get their money changed to shekels. So like if I had dollars with me, I would have to go to the money changers table and I would have to get it traded from dollars into shekels so then I could take my half shekel and go buy an animal to sacrifice. Well, 
the money changers were also cheating the people. They would take their money and then they would give them the shekels, but they wouldn't give them the same number of shekels as how much money they gave them. They were keeping some for themselves. They were cheating the people. They were lying and stealing. Well, Jesus, he went into the temple and he saw what was happening and it made him angry. Now, remember, Jesus loves everyone. He really does. He loves everyone. But he knew that these people in the temple, they knew better. They knew what they were doing was wrong. And so Jesus, the Bible tells us what Jesus did. The Bible tells us that Jesus got some cords of rope and he bound them together to make a whip. And he used that whip to drive out the money changers and the thieves out of the temple. And the Bible tells us that he overturned the tables of the money changers. Now, this was something extreme, wasn't it? We don't see Jesus doing something like this very often. He was angry because of how they were using God's house. And he tells us in the Bible, he says in verse 17 in Mark chapter 11, he says, it is, is it not written? Is it not written in the Old Testament of the Bible? My house shall be called of all nations, the house of prayer. Prayer is talking to Jesus, remember, talking to God. And so he's saying, when you come to the temple, you're supposed to be in prayer, in reverence, talking to God. But you have made it a den of thieves. That's what Jesus said. You have made it a den of thieves. You're stealing the people's money. You're using these sacrifices as an excuse to steal people's money. And it's not okay. And so Jesus drove them out of the temple. He had to try to get their attention somehow to show them that this was wrong. Now, what's this mean for us today? Well, remember the temple was like their church. So we need to treat our church, God's house, with respect. That's why we don't buy and sell things in the sanctuary at the church, because that's a place for worship and prayer and praise to God. And so we treat it with respect. And that's what Jesus was showing us here. God's house needs to be treated with respect. Now, I know we can't come into the church building right now. We have to stay in our homes or where we are. And so we can't come to the church building. But we can make our own church in our home. On Sundays, if we have church in our home, we could gather on the couch or at the kitchen table or something and watch church on TV. And then that place where we are can become a church, a house of God. And we can talk to God. Remember, we can talk to God anywhere, anytime. And so Jesus was trying to show the people that they needed to treat God's house with respect. Now, tomorrow, we're going to find out something else that happens to Jesus on his journey through Holy Week. I hope you have a great day.